Hey, everybody. Welcome to Hashtag Sports. You'll notice we're without the big ugly guy. Uh, Mario is on vacation this week, and uh, I have uh, Joe and Ryan flanked to my left and right. Uh, and there's a lot of talk going on for, uh, you know, NFL news. We're getting towards the end of the preseason. We've got some topics for you tonight, and we hope you guys have a great time with us. We are sponsored by Mr. Rogers Homes. If you're ever looking for a home in Arizona, Mr. Rogers Homes is the place to go. Joe just back from the 716 uh, for those of you that don't know joe does not reside in the 716 joe came up for a visit uh made the mistake of going to billy b's with the kids after the football game brave very brave uh ryan flanked to uh the opposite side of me gave joe the tickets to go to the preseason game so family affair joe uh react you've never been to one bill's drive right oh i've been there plenty i've never been there for the preseason game so ah uh, okay so it it's a, a different it is a different vibe isn't it absolutely Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I would. I actually, I told my wife, I was like, I will never take my kids until they're like teenagers to one bills drive for a regular <laughs> season game. Like that's just <laughs> not going to happen. But, but, and, and listen, Saturday night after Billy B's, they slept like champs. I <laughs> told they you. Were worn out. I told they you. Were I was gone. like, it's going to be, it's going to be an experience, but it's going to be yeah, worth it. Yeah. yeah Joe listen, was like, I, I don't know how, me I'll, while we were there. <laughs> I don't know how more kids don't get kidnapped from that place, but Hey, it's great. It works out fine. So we're yeah. Good. For those of you unaware, Billy Bees is at the Walden Galleria Mall, and it's basically if you had like a Discovery Zone or like a mm. Chuck E. Cheese on steroids, it's basically what it is. Um, and it's big enough for adults to go in and go down these gigantic slides and get lost. It's it is really fun for the kids. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're willing to, if you need your kids to get a good night's sleep, it's the best fifty bucks you're going to spend. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Uh, Ryan, you were home for the preseason. You don't go to preseason games though, do you? I usually don't. No, I have season tickets, but um, usually sit out the preseason, try to pace myself for the regular season as much as I can. So I, I like to give the tickets away to folks that are Joe coming up or friends that want to bring their kids but don't want to bring them to a regular season game. So, Well, and Rick Rarick said he just bought tickets to the Monday night game against the Broncos. If that doesn't look like a, a, like a beating waiting oh, to happen, I don't know why. I does. was really wrong on my assessment of the Broncos this year. <laughs> <laughs> I was really yeah, wrong. We'll talk about pre, we'll talk about preseason overreactions in a little bit. Well, but. I don't know if that's an overreaction. I think anybody that said, "Well, will the Broncos get better once Nate Hackett is gone?" Everybody's like, "Yeah, they yeah. gotta right." Like Sean Payton, it's, it's gotta be better. Right. Can't be worse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wrongo. <laughs> yeah, sure can be. <laughs> Where's Mario? Is he do rag shopping? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one, Dan. Uh, yeah, so Mario is on vacation. Uh, down in, he's in the Virginia, middle of the West state, Virginia, Virginia I think he is. Yeah, yeah. One of them, one of the Virginia the things. Middle one of those. state. Yeah, yeah, one of those. Drove, bold, one day. Real was bold. planning on doing it in one day with the kids. Bold, bold strategy, mm -hmm. Cotton. We'll see if that pays <laughs> off. That works out for him. <laughs> uh, so we want to get to our very first topic of the evening. And hey, let's go. Oh, geez, I left it all the way the hell over here. There we go. Number one, guys, not used to this. Uh, number one, Indy at Buffalo recap. Uh, admittedly, right, I wasn't super dialed into the game. I saw what I needed to see. Joe, you were at the game. Uh, right. Anything uh, from these players that people might not know that kind of jumped out at you? Like, don't get me wrong. Any anytime Andy Isabella Andy Isabella catches a you know a route sitting in the uh, sitting in the pocket there for twenty yards, uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm a fan. You can sign me up for that. So outside of the one Andy Isabella catch that mattered, uh, what uh, what jumped off the page to you uh, while you were at the preseason game? Our offensive line still needs work. Like it doesn't look like it's gotten too much better. You know, our Cyrus played fine for what he was. You know, the well, fact he that got the start. And I think, and he got yeah, the start. and I was going to say, Ryan, to to your point, you texted us during the game. The fact that he got the start kind of kind of shows the hand of this offense, maybe the way they're heading. So that's a good thing. Um, but other than that, no, nothing really stood out. Like, uh, you know, we had, uh, Tommy Doyle got injured during the game. So, um, 
you know, I, it's funny though. Like, and I, like after we went through the Hamlin thing, now if someone gets injured, like, get up. Who cares? Shut up. Get off the field. Let's just keep going. Now, like, Hamlin, like, I, I don't know. Like, I don't care about injuries. Now. I'm like, whatever. We may, we survived the worst of injuries that we could ever do. So, well, Sword um, Brother Yosef says Latavius Murray is dangerous, and I wouldn't want to tackle him. Ryan, you were a Latavius Murray stand for a brief period of time, as yeah. as best I recall. Uh, Latavius Murray is he even going to make this team? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he's going to make the team. Damian Harris can't seem to stay healthy, which was one of his problems in New England. Um, he's already got some soft tissue problems going on uh, in camp, which is never great. And people forget. I tweeted this out during the game because, like, the the you know Twitter was abound with like, oh, Latavius Murray. He's got so much you know so much left in the tank, and he looks so explosive. Like, get for don't don't forget he was the leading rusher for the Broncos last year, Latavius Murray. Mm -hmm. Like he's not, mm -hmm. he's not a slouch just because he's, you know, up there in age when you compare to some of these other guys that can't find jobs until today, Latavius Murray, he's a legitimate back. You know, he's going to be a short yardage guy. He's going to take carries away in the goal line. Um, it's going to be him and Damian Harris taking carries away from cook, probably in the goal line situations. Um, and I absolutely think that Latavius Murray, I don't think he has any problem making this roster at this point after that Naheem Hines injury. I don't see why he wouldn't make the roster. Him, Damian Harris, probably, and obviously Cook. So, and, oh, I, well, I, no, Joe, I'll let you go. Go ahead. Okay. And I wanted your guys' take. So I am, I after watching the the game, I am all about getting a replace, uh, another backup quarterback. I, I, like, I know a lot yeah, of I wonder, people are I saying, wonder why you feel that way. I, I know a lot of people are saying Kyle Allen needs to leave and Matt Barkley's are our backup. I don't like either of them. I think Matt Barkley did fine in in against third and fourth string guys, but and, and maybe maybe you keep Barkley on for for the next game to see how he does against the second string. But I think we need a whole new backup quarterback. We need to look at someone else. That's uh, your guys I mean, opinion. this is probably a wait and see sort of thing, Joe, just, just to be honest with you. Right. Anybody mm -hmm. that you go pick up right now is probably not anybody that you would really want. Right. I, I think the move here was Kyle Allen is more athletic than Matt Barkley. Mm -hmm. This is why well, we are yeah. where we are. Right. Yeah. Like and he's and younger. Buffalo's, right. I mean, he, he, he came in younger. with Allen. So mm -hmm. he's he's the same age mm -hmm. as Allen. I think people who are clamoring for Matt Barkley to be the backup quarterback in Buffalo. Forget how bad Matt Barkley was in his one appearance with Buffalo back in yep. 2020. I think it was um, rough outing. And I think he was like, he, I just pulled the stats up. He was 11 for 21 for 197, one and one. So mm -hmm. not at all what you want in a Buffalo offense. Right. And that was three years ago. So, well, and, and Shivas brings up a great point is Matt Barkley is supposed to look better than Kyle Allen. You know, like sure. the fact is, is that Barkley's been in the building for a really long time at this point for a backup quarterback. So, again, I think this is something that you may see Buffalo cut Kyle Allen and Matt Barkley. Mm -hmm. Cut them both, right? Like mm -hmm. it's, once roster cuts are there, you can cut them both because the entire league is going to go through on August 29th roster cuts, right? You're going to have to yeah. go from 90 to 53. There's going to be quarterbacks available that will probably be amongst the pedigree of what you already have on the roster. Right. So mm -hmm. are, are you worried about Kyle Allen? Because to me, the QB two job in the preseason typically often looks worse than the QB three job. Right. And I have a feeling that's because those second team guys, you're never really getting reps with the consistent players. But when you're on the third team, you're pretty often getting reps with all the third team guys. Sure. Like it, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's normally pretty consistent. So the QB two job normally looks like a total shit show because mm -hmm. that you're often never playing with the same people. There, there's no chemistry across that second unit. So I'm not as alarmed by it, but the pump fake to the running back on a screen and then yeah. still delivering the ball is rookie level quarterback stuff mm -hmm. and that that's mm -hmm. the type of stuff that concerned me yeah yeah and, and don't forget too i mean when you're the backup for buffalo the starters aren't playing right like josh allen isn't playing so you're getting reps with the first team that you've mm -hmm. to paul's point barely see reps with and you're also doing it against the first string defense for the other team because the colts need all the work they can get so their first unit was in there for quite a while mm -hmm. um so yeah, I'm not, i mean i'm not worried necessarily about one game um, but I, I've been firmly in the camp of uh, we probably shouldn't head into the season with Kyle Allen as the backup quarterback for, for quite a while. Barkley's fine. Barkley will be a practice squad 
guy because he's he's a coach on the field at this point. He's not a you know, you're not you're not looking for Matt Barkley to play any significant right. time. So well, and Barkley, I think people forget that Barkley wasn't really on the roster last year, right? He was no. practice yeah. squatted for most of the season and then mm-hmm. activated. So and now that you're allowed to have three quarterbacks uh game day dressed, but only have two actually on the game day roster. The big rule change, Matt Barkley is going to be active for every single game. It's just going to be what mm-hmm. happens, whether he's mm-hmm. on the practice squad or not. Um, he'll be so, the extension of Dorothy on the field. Is what right. Be. Yeah. 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 Uh, Rick Rarick says, hey, you can bet you can get Sam Darnold once San Francisco cuts him. That's an, that'd San be, Francisco's that'd be gonna fun. going to hang on to all those quarterbacks with their injury history. They'll be lucky <laughs> if they don't have to start Sam Darnold. <laughs> <They'll>, <laughs> if we drop both of ours, they'll pick up another one. They'll like, Kyle Allen, come on, let's go. Yeah, so correct me if I'm wrong. Kyle Allen, former Carolina Panther. Is that right? Am I remembering this correctly? Kyle Allen, former so. quarter, yeah. Carolina yeah. Panther. Yeah, he went. Yeah, he, came, came, yeah. he was a rookie with Carolina, I think. So is right. this the last of it? Like, are we finally done with this? Like, it has, is this to, be. The last it has of it? to be, right? Like, it has to be. <laughs> it's kind of like, how many run- more years is Tremaine Edmonds going to be younger than guys coming out in the draft? Like, eventually, <laughs> it's got to stop. <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's good. Uh, so, first off, uh, again, preseason games aside, um, when is when is the Bills Mafia going to just start the uh, Jordan Mims for for HB one? uh sort of rally cry we seem to in buffalo every year falling in love with a running back that just is not going to make the roster <laughs> so is it fine is it jordan mims this year or is that is that who it is i feel like that's who it is i don't know man three three yards of carry isn't screaming <laughs> any type of productivity <laughs> i mean if anything it's going to be like I don't know, Darrington Evans or yeah, something. I was about to say Darrington Evans. Where they find this yeah, guy dude, from? Right, yeah. You know, it'll, it'll, it's going to, this year, it's going to be, it's, um, it'll be Justin Shorter. He's going to be the guy this year. He'll yeah. be the training camp darling that's, you know, everyone's shocked when he doesn't make the roster. Um, and then they remember that there's like six more talented wide receivers on the roster. And they're like, oh, yeah, I, I guess that does make sense that they kept, you know, Deontay Hardy that they signed to a big contract over Justin Shorter. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, and it's funny now when you look at that wide receiver room, there is one, two, three, four receivers on the roster that are six foot or under. Mm-hmm. Everybody else, well, there's another eight receivers on the roster that are mm-hmm. six one or, or bigger. And, and honestly, there's a lot of them at six four, right? Like this is a tall wide receiver group. Mm-hmm. I think that's what you saw at the end of this preseason game was a bunch of really skinny tall kids out there just catching balls that these shorter dbs just had no chance of of catching up to you know and it's and i think again in the preseason uh it's really easy to get excited about wide receivers but again the profile of justin shorter man good grief like he's just he just looks so much different than uh, desmond patman you know or uh, tyrell shavers like just is a different completely different body yeah, and Sha- Shavers was the guy I was thinking of, because shorter. I don't even. I don't even know if he played, or I, I know he didn't have a catch in the preseason game. But Shavers is the one that had the touchdown, right? Yeah, he's going to be the yep. guy that everyone's like, you know, beating the drum for, as uh, as cut day comes closer. So uh, Dalton Kincaid. So mm-hmm. Kincaid was uh, on the field to the Bills when they uh, scored their first touchdown, right? Kincaid was on the field with Knox. They're both stacked to the left, Kincaid on the inside of that stack, right? We're going to see a lot of two tight end sets in the goal line, right? We're mm-hmm. going to see a lot of two tight end sets in the goal line. And this year, they're actually like legitimate two tight end sets, not like yeah. Dawson Knox, Quentin Morris, two tight end sets or two tight end sets or Dalton Knox. Or Tommy and, Sweeney. Uh, Sweeney. Or Tommy Sweeney, right? Uh, so, how different does that make Buffalo in the red zone? And do you think we're going to see glimpses of it in the final preseason game, or is this just we know it's coming and we just kind of have to wait to see how this all transpires? You're you're going to see a lot of runs in the red zone, I think, in preseason. I think they're really going to try to establish what they can do in the red zone with the running game, and we saw that right. They had the interception, mm-hmm. short field. And it was two straight runs uh, for the touchdown. You're mm-hmm. going to see a lot of that. I don't think they're going to want to give away what they're going to do with this personnel in uh, in the regular season, because mm-hmm. I think you're going to see a lot of those same looks with the two tight ends, you know, right up, right on the line, you know, 
in a blocking scenario and they're just going to go box guys out and just be bigger than the guys in, in the red zone. But I don't think they're going to show a lot of that. I would expect a lot of runs yeah. um, in the red zone during the preseason just to see what they have, see what they can do in the red zone with that running game. Mm-hmm. Hopefully put some confidence in Josh Allen that he doesn't have to be the guy in, in red zone, that he can right. trust the running game and not check out of those types of plays. Mm-hmm. Um, that would be that would be what I would assume we'll see with this uh, with this setup. Yeah, and and that's what preseason is, right? You you check out different formations, but for the most part, everything's pretty vanilla. You don't run anything special. You don't run anything unique, and that's the way you want to keep it. And that's every team, and that's why you get all these overreactions when it comes to preseason because people see things and they're like, oh, this is this is the team we're going to see. Well, not necessarily. I mean, uh, you again, you check the formations. You want to see what what might look right, what might not work right. Uh, certain things that you're looking for as a coach, as a coordinator, then, you know, some things that maybe we don't even realize. And um, yeah, but when you run those, those formations, you're still running a pretty vanilla offense and not giving away, Hey, we have Kincaid on the inside, probably because he's a little bit uh, faster. If Knox backs up, they're both eligible. Maybe he can get out of the break a little bit faster, things like that. You don't want to expose all that. We've seen the highlight reel of what Kincaid has done in training camp. That's good enough for me. I don't need to see Kincaid do much else. If Alan's comfortable with them, Josh, then I'm fine. Well, and let's be honest, right? In that two tight end set, they put Kincaid in between Knox and Dawkins. Like you literally mm-hmm. could have put anybody there. Just said, Listen, kid, just stand here when they hike <laughs> it. Just just hold just on up. to whatever's in front of you. That's it. Just hold on to whatever's in yep. front of you. And that's pretty much what happened. I got to be honest with you. If you go back and watch Kincaid on that play, it, it's rough. <laughs> it's it's not it's not a clean block. Let's just say that. It's that, that might get called in the regular game. Um so final note about the preseason, can't it can't happen without us talking about it. Dane Jackson interception baby. Woo! Uh, this, uh, obviously big Dane Jackson fan, uh, Dane Jackson, again, looks very well positioned to start the season as, as CB two in my assessment. Again, I'm a big fan of Dane Jackson. I just think from a consistency standpoint, McDermott's going to go with what he can depend on early. And, and that's going to be, that's going to be Dane Jackson early. So to me, looks like Dane Jackson's got that CB two role. If we had to make the roster right now, but the Dane Jackson interception, great play. I was really impressed with Rousseau on that play because that was actually Rousseau pumped out the screen because that was going to be that was going to be a screen play. Rousseau was patient, pumped out the screen, and you're seeing a lot of safety or corner blitzes because it's what McDermott seems to want to run right now. Uh, And that that siphoned out that screen pretty good. Nice play by a second year player of Rousseau to not get caught up in the wash there. I was real impressed by that. Yeah, I, yeah, I was impressed okay. defensively as a whole. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, there, there, the comment, uh, Dilly, that's, that's a good name, Dilly Dilly Dale, makes a good point. Like, the safety setup was really interesting to me. Rap was on the field a lot, which we thought we'd see Hyde dropped into the box quite a bit with Poyer rotating off to play that free safety role. Um, I, I They blitzed. Like, when's the last time we saw a blitz on second down? It was second and six, and they brought a house blitz. And I mm-hmm. tweeted out like in this economy that they're blitzing like it's <laughs> it, you never see it saw that with Leslie Frazier. So they're McDermott. He's going to be aggressive. That's what he was in Philadelphia. That's what he was in Carolina. He's going to bring, you know, an extra safety down into the box. He's going to bring a, a linebacker off the edge. He's going to bring somebody up the middle and somebody up off the edge. Um, he's going to bring Oh, Joe. You said they were going to happen, man. I you said how much we're going to fall. Be careful. Yeah, so, um, He's going to bring Joe, you said they were going to happen. So, um, it's, so it was really interesting to see how creative he got with his blitzes. Yeah, you like how I just kind of rolled back into that? Um, it, it was it was great to see how he got creative with those blitzes because that was one of our questions heading into this year, right? Was how what is this defense going to look like? Is it going to be schematically different? Um, and the first preseason game, they were night and day different in terms of what you saw with Leslie Frazier last few seasons. Right. So, Joe, looking at mm-hmm. that, right, do you think uh, Frazier blitzing as often as he is right now? I'm sorry, McDermott, old habits die hard, man. So you think McDermott blitzing as hard, as much as he is right now, is it just because when you're talking about schematically, it's the easiest thing to do is just send Siren Neal on a, on a corner blitz? Like, is it? And this is just what what's the easiest thing to do right now is let's just keep putting pressure on 
you know, keep pressure on over and over again with players that are like, uh, Sierra Neal's probably going to make the team in some form or fashion. So I, I don't, I, I know what you do. Just go run after the quarterback. Try that. Let's just try that. Well, first of all, let's let's be honest about it. Dane Jackson's interception had nothing to do with Dane Jackson, right? Teron Johnson could have caught that ball. See that? There we go. Yeah, Joe's. Yeah, no, no, Dane Jackson <laughs> slander no Dane on Jackson this channel. Slander. Yeah, no, that was clean. That was clean. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Jack, I mean, Jackson. He was, you know, he was he was passing the receiver off. It was a positional type mm-hmm. of thing. He was where he was supposed to be in that situation. Yeah, right. it, it wasn't it was a right read. Place it wasn't right something time. where he he made the jump. Yeah. But he but he right. was positionally where he was. And I think one mm-hmm. of the things about Kyir Elam is he wasn't positionally where he was supposed to go a lot right. in that preseason mm-hmm. game. He was chasing right. a lot. He was in in bad positions, trying to make it up with with, with his athleticism. And that's to your point, Paul where Dane Jackson probably wins right. out because you know he McDermott can trust he's going to be where he needs to be. And when you're bringing blitzes, you have to know that your corners and your secondary right. is going to be where they're supposed to be exactly. uh, systematically. Exactly. And since, Sorry, and, Joe, and, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. And, Sorry. Answering your question and, and, and going off what Ryan said, and, and McDermott, since now he's the defense coordinator and head coach, he needs that reliability, right? He needs people who know where they're supposed to be because he's not necessarily going to have time to be teaching that mm-hmm. throughout the season because he has to be head coach. And to me, seeing all these blitzes it is really exciting when it comes to the season because I don't think this is him just kind of going through the motions. Like he has to figure out what works because he needs to rely on somebody else, whether that be whether that be, you know, the linebackers coach or whoever it's going to be or someone on the field to say, hey, we've done this. We've done this before. We need to do this and get everyone in the right position. Because, again, not only does he have to worry about defense, being defense coordinator, he has to worry about being head coach. He doesn't have time to be, to be teaching people things. So mm-hmm. I think that seeing all these blitzes in the first game of the preseason might be something that we see going forward coming into the regular season. Interesting comment by Von Miller. I don't know if you guys heard this, but Von Miller was talking about his situation in Buffalo. And uh, again, I think this speaks to the condition of the team right now. Von Miller said, "Let you know, I've got five more years on my deal. This is not verbatim, right? This is not a direct quote, but here, here's a summation. I got five years left on my deal. Three more are guaranteed. Uh, I'll never play for another team. We're going to go. We'll win two or three championships, and that'll be it. This is the best like my defensive line coach is the best defensive line coach I've ever had. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm all Say about something. the culture. I'm all about the room. And that's really a fascinating statement to hear from Von Miller, right? To say that the defensive line coach is the best coach I've best defensive line coach I've ever had coming from a hall of famer like that. That's pretty impressive. But again, it's not like they don't pump that defensive line full of talent over and over and over right, again. Right. right. Like, so that the comment by Von Miller, I think is, is nice, right. For bills fans to say, Hey, this, this hall of famer is going to ride it out. This is going to be his last stop. He even said that this is my last stop. And he's like, yeah, you know, I've got three years guaranteed. So go win two, three championships and then I'll be done. Like that's, that's a bold statement. Yeah. I mean, Von, Von's been a bold guy since he came into the NFL, right? I mean, he's just been, he's always been that kind of guy. Um, it's nice to have a guy like that on your side, um, touting the praises of your defense. It's only going to help as the pocketbook gets tighter as seasons go on and you start to pay for that Josh Allen contract. Mm-hmm. Um, you're going to have to lure some guys here for below market value. And that a Von Miller is the type of guy who helps that um, same thing with like a Jordan Poyer, how Mike Hyde, those guys who have probably signed their last big time contracts in the NFL. Like those are guys that um, you need as, as the purse strings get tighter and you need, you need to start drawing defensive talent mm-hmm. with things other than money. That's going to, mm-hmm. it's only going to help. I don't, I don't want to talk about that, Paul. The like, company put on the screen. What did I say about Ed Oliver? What did I say about Ed Oliver? <laughs> he does great in training camp. Good for you. J- Joe's not a fan. Joe was not Joe's a fan not of a the fan. contract extension. No, not, not even a little bit. Take that money and, and go get, go get D hop. Or do we're else? we're a little past that, Joe. We're a little we're a little past well, that. Past the extension, <laughs> like I, it, just because I don't like the extension doesn't mean it's not here to stay. I know, I know. Well, let's transition over to our next topic. Damn it, 